When people gotcha. say they want to get, get everyone in a boat, I say try getting everybody that's watching a live stream that they love with their hand already on the mouse to click the like button. Welcome back, Truth Seekers from around the flat plane. It's time for another edition of the Flat Earth Files. And as promised, we have a very special guest today. Many of you know him. He's been, um, he's really been at the uh, spear of the truth community for quite some times. And he really has taken the world by storm uh, with the mantra Flat Earth Dave. He's been heard on the Alex Jones show, Talk is Jericho. Um, and he is really responsible for my awakening uh, four years ago. So it's a pleasure to have, uh, for the first time to this program, uh, Flat Earth Dave, David Weiss. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today, brother. George, thanks for having me on. And as a matter of fact, I just did my fourth episode with uh, Chris Jericho yesterday. It'll be airing in a couple of weeks. And, um, and don't forget Stu Peters. Stu Peters, huge network. Uh, that, that Half that network right. is flat now. And uh, it's waking up lots of people. Love them or hate them. Uh, that guy is waking up millions and millions of people, tens of millions. Yeah, I saw that interview and you could kind of see in his eyes when he started to realize, oh, my gosh, because it's funny as truthers and we've all been down that road. Most of us. It's interesting. I've actually run across a few people who Flat Earth was their first kind of conspiracy. I find that weird because for me, I had to have a lot of other things fall in sure. order for me to let guard down to look at flat earth but watching people um whether it's owen benjamin or like you said Stu peters when they start to go through them there's realms of emotions it's it's a wild it, watch you know the 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 um, montage i did of owen waking up in real time you know all the clips of him from you know yeah. I, the earth can't be flat i don't want to be a flat earth person uh youtube is now striking that video like karen b got a strike for having that video it's still on my channel like i don't know what to do like do i hide it do i like what is going on i think youtube is slowly um crush crushing the you know it, now everything's hidden in the algorithm, and I think things are going to start disappearing rather quickly. But we have a solution for all of that. Stu, by the way, Stu Peters, um, he he's called me from dinner parties where he's flat smacking his <laughs> friends and he needs help. And um, if you want to check out the the only reason to have Twitter is realstupeters.com. You got you to gotta subscribe to that. Go just watch his tweets. It's literally the best thing on the Internet next to Flat Earth. And then sometimes it's flat earth, so it's good. It's all good. Yeah, and that's one of the many questions I'm going to ask you today. It's funny. Uh, I don't want to get into it right now, but it's funny how people will demand uh, every answer for flat earth, but they're very – they won't go even – they won't even go in and look at heliocentrism. Most people can't even tell you how far the sun is, how far the moon is, or show me an experiment where somebody can actually get water to stick to a ball. Dave, yeah. the Flat Earth Fox podcast is about – People coming on, just everyday listeners coming on and sharing their <clears throat> journey to the truth. Before we get into the questions and how your awesome app that you you took the time to show me some of the upgrades that's coming, and that's very exciting. Can you tell people how you went from normie Dave to to the person you are today? I don't know if I was ever normal, um, but um, <laughs> you know, as, but it's funny. One of my earliest memories, and I've told this uh, for those of you who have heard it, just chill out, go get a cup of coffee. It's very short. Um, in kindergarten or first grade, they took us outside, the teacher. I remember what he was wearing. He had like a, he was wearing like a, a vest from a suit and his white shirt, and he swung a bucket of water around and said, This is gravity. And I said, But if the if the earth is a ball, you know, the, the water's on the outside, wouldn't you have to turn the bucket the other way? And he thought about it. He showed me his book, which was highlighted in like all different colors. He goes, This is how they tell me to teach it. So that's how I'm going to teach it. But you keep asking questions. And then I went off and played on the swing set. And um, it really didn't click until 2014, many, 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 many years later, um, how it relates to what's going on in my life. So how did I go? Um, you know who woke me up? I was literally asleep. I uh, was protesting this woman in my neighborhood who is now my best friend um, because she wanted to put a, uh, a she wanted to stop a cell tower from coming at the bottom of this valley where I live, where there's no cell service. I'm like, are you kidding me? I keep dropping calls down there. And I was like fighting her on that. And now it's like, what an idiot I was. But um, shortly after that, Alex Jones woke me up. Sorry, people. Chill. <laughs> whether he's uh, whether he's what's his face or whatever. 
he woke me up and now I've moved past lots of his nonsense, but Alex Jones is screaming a lot of truth. You know, they're making the frogs gay. Yep. AstraZene is making the frogs gay and it's affecting humans too. So Alex woke me up. Then I kind of grew past that. And then I was really, the, the thing that got me, I was looking into money, what money was. I was like, what is money? How come money's worth something? And then I was looking into it. I found out the federal reserve is a private bank. I found out about the IRS and, uh, and my buddy, uh, Tim Rothschild adopted no connection, uh, who I worked with at this solar company. We would talk conspiracies in the lunchroom every day. And it turned out where, you know, there was a crowd of people waiting for us to come into the lunchroom to talk. They're like, wow. And then one day he goes to me, he goes, Hey Dave, my friend who's a comedian in the city, uh, he, they're building a podcast studio at stand up comedy club, stand up New York comedy club. And, uh, I go, what's a podcast. <laughs> And he says, <laughs> he goes, it's a radio show that's recorded. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. And he goes, I'm thinking we could do a conspiracy podcast, but it has to be mixed with comedy. So you and I will be the truth seekers and he'll be the guy that turns everything into a fart joke. I'm like, great idea. And it was called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. And it took off. It went on fire. And um, after the first episode, literally all of the management in the building, they're all like looking into the studio, holding their heads going, what the heck's going on? The name of the, we named that episode 9-11 is Dave's Baby. Um, but then two years into the show, people started sending me flat earth stuff and I just banned them. I said, you're out. <laughs> you're too stupid. And then uh, Sophia Smallstorm, for those of you that know who she is, she convinced me to look. And I looked with a poor attitude, the attitude of I'm going to disprove flat earth and prove the globe. That's not a really a scientific way to look at things. You should look at it and go, OK, let me find out the details and then I'll make my decision. I made my decision before I started looking. And when I looked, I truthfully looked. And back then in 2014, YouTube was a big help. Now they're, they're a total hindrance. Um, after two weeks, I was like, oh, my God, the Earth is not a globe. And um, my life has turned pretty level since then. <laughs> I would say upside down, but there's no upside down. <laughs> That's right. And uh, one of the things that I found talking with all the guests, that, that transformation, when you finally accept, man, I, I, I've been lied to. Now, for me, someone who was a career soldier, when I went down the 9-11 rabbit hole back in uh, right after I retired, and because I had a lot of thoughts about it, and I took the time. And uh, for me, the uh, the guy who bought the uh, World Trade Center just, what, six or eight weeks before the whole thing went down, Larry. Larry Silver, lucky lucky just, Larry. Yeah, Lucky Larry <laughs> keeps his yacht off of where I, where I, where I live. And it's really? very nice. It's a very nice yacht. Wow. But <laughs> yeah, that was, pain that was painful for me because everything I had to endure and four tours of Iraq and some of the things I lost some friends. Yeah. But to me, this was a different type of lie. This was um, not just a part of my life that had been challenged. This was my entire life. And, and um, I tell my listeners all the time, it was a long two-week ordeal. Maybe it was 10 days. Maybe it was 17 days. But it seemed... Uh, it was quite some time, very little sleep, trying to say, well, if this is a lie, right, if this is a lie, then what, is there anything that is true uh, in our world today? And then as it turns out, most everything at best is a little bit of truth sprinkled with a lot of lies. There's nothing really organic in our society at all, whether it be the movies, whether it be the news, uh, the matrix, the way it is built, is built very smartly to keep us working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. And with whatever little spare time we have, we'd rather watch football or or go to the movies than actually understand what type of world we're living in. Social, social, social engineering has us, you know, working, you know, we work paycheck to paycheck. 99% of the people in the world work paycheck to paycheck. And then when they have time off, they watch movies on Netflix, you know, mind control and they drink and they go to sports because if their team wins victory and Thank my you. candidate won, I'm free, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, when people used to say, you know, the Romans did bread and circuses, you know, they, they had the glass. I was like, wow, that was really some archaic times back then. It's no different <laughs> now. It's no different now. We have these stadiums that are channeling all of this energy. Think of all the energy, what people cheering for their teams. And then have you seen the satellite shots of many stadiums? They're the eye of Horus, like the yeah. parking lots. It's like crazy. But, but the thing is, if you don't believe in that stuff, you'll just write it off. The elite believe in that stuff. The elite use witchcraft and whatever you want to call it, wizardry. Um, and, you know, you don't believe it, then you're at a, lo lo you're at a loss if it's real. And it, uh, it definitely is real at this point. 
Absolutely. I want to get into some of the questions I have for you, and then we'll get into the listeners' questions, if that's okay. And then we're definitely going to talk about the app, and I'm excited for you to share some of the, uh, if you can, some of the updates that's coming on the, the app, which is wonderful. And by the way, folks, you can gift the app. I've done it several times. So if you, uh, we talk about on the program how to leave breadcrumbs, because if you just run up to somebody, Dave, and I'm sure you're quite aware of this, and you just start saying the world is flat and all this other stuff, it, it tends to drive people away more than make them curious. So by leaving the breadcrumbs, uh, by making them just interested enough for them to look for themselves. Yeah, George, people will say, what's the best thing to say to somebody, you know, and it's different for everybody. Some people, it might be, a you know, a biblical point. Now other people it might scare them away. You know, some people need a scientific test. Some people need uh, a, a human interest story, you know, that 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 shows somebody waking up. Somebody might need Owen Benjamin waking up in real time. Um, it's all different. So the best thing to do, if I had to give one answer, is ask questions, right? And I, and also because so many people are motivated by money, and so many people think that um, flat Earth is the dumbest thing on Earth. This dumb guy is offering three bitcoins for one proof of the globe. So you go to your friend, go, "Hey, listen, I've been looking at this flat Earth thing. I'm not sure about it, but this guy is offering three bitcoins. That's a hundred grand." I go, can you help me? I'll give you one of them or I'll split it with you. You know, <laughs> just like that. If you help me, I need one proof of the globe, right? And then they'll be like, okay, where do you want to start? And say, here, watch this. ODD is 21 questions because that literally will, will point, plant 21 seeds in their mind that they'll never be able to get rid of. And then, you know, they're going to sprout. Yeah, that, that's really well said. Um, the first, I, I guess the question I get the most, uh, whether it be emails or voicemails, is what about the tides, right? These happen twice a day, and that's one of the big things about the moon and the gravity, more scientism, but how do you explain the tides? So let's talk about how the globe explains the tides, okay? Right, right, right. right so we're going we're gonna to laugh here. So here's the earth, and here's the moon, okay? And uh, let's say that the sun... Let's see if I can do this. I can't do that. I, I, I'm not that coordinated. I only do one. Okay. So the moon is pulling th this water away, right? God, everything's backwards. Okay. The moon is pulling the water away from the earth. Do you know the story why there's another high tide on the other side of the earth at the same time, which there is pretty much? What's the, the official the, narrative? The official story is the moon is pulling the water away from the earth. But it's too far from this water to pull it away, but it can pull the earth away from the water. And then the earth <laughs> rotates inside those bulges, <laughs> right? And two things happen. One, like you, you laugh and go, God, the globe is completely retarded. And the other one is people go, I can't figure it out. I have to leave it to, you know, um, a guy that, you know, is a failed comedian that wears a bow tie for him to tell me. All right. So the, the other thing is, if the moon pulled the water away from the earth, how come it does how come we're not lighter when there's a full moon? Shouldn't it be pulling us? We're in 70% water. Shouldn't we be a little bit lighter, a measurable amount lighter, right? When there's a full moon? Right? And why is it when there's a full moon, there's bigger tides, and then when there's a new moon, there's not these bigger tides? Because the moon is still there in the heliocentric model, it's just not lit up by the sun. Right. If the moon has gravity, whether the sunlight's on it or not, there's no difference. The gravity's still there if, it, if that was a thing. So what's that correlation? Is it gravity? So um, and the other thing is, how does water stay up in the air with gravity? Is it, it's supposedly gravity is holding the air down, but it, the water, which is heavier, goes up. Right. And then the other thing is, um, when we look at tides, where's my I had a. Um, where is it? Um, the tides follow the magnetic fields on the war, uh, of the world more so than the, than the moon and the sun. Here's a, um, a tide chart, and there's these things called nodes where there's no tide, and they're all over the place, and then the red, the red and the blue are the high and the low tides. They literally circle the node. So how does that even relate to the moon? You've been told your whole life that the tides are related to the moon. They're not. However, the moon does have influence on the tides. The moon, the sun and the moon are the anode and cathode of the Earth battery. And so it's all, everything is electrostatic, electromagnetic. And the, the moon and the sun, um, one cause, I believe they cause a wake through the tropics, which gives us our counter-rotating vortices in the, in the north and south. But they also 
energize the water. What completely explains the tides? I don't know. You know, I think in the north, twice a day, the north inhales the water and then exhales. We have tides 20, 30 feet high in, uh, in, uh, in Alaska, and there's no tides at the Maldives, thank God, because the Maldives are only a foot above the ocean water, but there's no tide. I mean, there's only like a six-inch tide there. So the whole idea that the moon um, is the cause is preposterous. Yeah, um, I've heard some ideals. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. Um, go ahead. I heard some ideas that, you know, it, the, the sun is positive, the moon is negative, and it, it kind of moves because it's the salt water. But also uh, something that I've heard a lot recently is what you just mentioned is that the the earth breathes kind of in and out twice a day. And maybe also could it be just uh, because the waters affected are the, the waters that actually push against the ice walls. Could it be the ice walls moving back and forth a little bit twice a day? I don't think I, I you know what I've never heard that. I've never thought about it, but to me, it's not the wall. There's no ice wall. There's the shoreline of Antarctica. It's the right, shoreline. Right. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It's the container yeah. for our water. It's the containment. It's the, it's like, look at a lake that has land all the way around it. Of course it does. Otherwise the lake wouldn't be there. That's Antarctica. And, the, and all, that lake is all of the world oceans. On the frequently asked questions, there's the what about tides? And why do I keep getting that backwards? Um, and there's a whole bunch of videos on tides that'll get into it a little deeper than I just did. And that leads to my next question is, uh, I mentioned this before, but people, uh, when they're first introduced to Flat Earth, they will spend weeks and months and years trying to disprove flat earth and if there's one thing that you can't answer well then it's obviously then flat earth doesn't exist number one kind of going back to what you just said i think as humans we're curious and we're always looking for answers and that's fine but i think the way god created everything we're never going to know these things maybe until we you know pass on to the next life and maybe we learn those things as uh, we ascend through the firmament into heaven. What are your thoughts on that? As far as knowing everything, that's a fact. We're never going to know everything. And that, thank God, because if they would like, all right, I know everything, I'm done. Um, yep. There is a lot to know, and the world is super fascinating. And since you became a flat earther, you haven't had a second of boredom in your life, no matter what, no matter no, where you are. And you're stuck in traffic for five hours. Cool. My, you know, I got my phone batteries working. I got internet. I'm good to go. And you watch uh, videos, listen to podcasts, and, uh, and uh, time flies. Um, there's so much to learn. And, you know, most people put themselves in debt to go to universities to learn nonsense to become a good little worker slave. So what was the exact question again? Because I had a good point I was going to make and uh, I, I veered. Uh, basically how people, if you can't answer one question about oh. flat earth, then it's debunked, but they won't take the time to debunk heliocentrism. Right. We, uh, we, you know, we'll do laser tests over water and everything. And the, and the anti-flat earth will come out and go, what was the water temperature? What was the air humidity? What time of day was it? What was the exact latitude? What was, you know, the wind speed, you know, blah, 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 all of this stuff. Right. But then if somebody on a Netflix edited deception video goes interesting, they go up oh, that proves the curve. You know, oh, interesting. Jaron said interesting when they couldn't see the light. And then they don't realize that they could see the light a minute later. And even the fact like the, the whole their whole thing is ridiculous. I have something for you today that you may not have seen. Maybe you have it's something new, it's something that I showed. And um, I think it is the un. it is done. Throw out the laser tests, throw out the mirror tests, throw out the, the infrared photography, Throw everything out. Throw out the southern flight path. Throw out everything. This is undisputable proof that the Earth is not a globe. There you go. So we're going to hold that. Let's go through your questions first. We're going to save it for the end. Okay. Um, but I do want to mention, speaking of undisputable things, uh, recently, maybe it was one, one or two months ago. I don't remember. But it was Flat Earth Banjo. Is his name Eddie, maybe? Eddie, yes. The best. Did you see the earthquake video he did? Oh, yeah, yeah, show, absolutely. That's incredible. It really shows that if we were on a globe, the earthquake, uh, what's the word? The ripples from the earthquake should have gone all the way around uh, Antarctica, but it didn't. They should. They go around everything else, but they never go around Antarctica. And when you watch that big earthquake, it just wraps around Antarctica, just like we see. I don't have the, the, the I haven't loaded that yet, but that's a great clip. And I believe if um, if we go back to the app, I think I have it in here. Frequently asked questions. 
And then bottom row, do we have earthquakes on here? Um, I don't think it's on here yet. Shadows, meteors, and asteroids. Um, no, but that's a great one. Just look it up on uh, on his channel. Actually, I made the playlist already. I just didn't have enough videos in it. I'm going to add a new button. It's going to be earthquakes. And earth. everything proves flat earth. You know, everything that they say proves the globe is a lie. Proves flat, proves flat earth. earth. Absolutely. Yeah, everything proves flat earth. Oh, my God. So, let's go. To new T-shirt. Everything proves flat earth. There you go. Right? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> By the way, if you if you're looking for t-shirts, just hit the shopping cart button. Whoops, uh, the shopping cart button, and uh, there's my t-shirt shop. A lot of people say, "Where'd you get that t-shirt?" I got a whole bunch of other ones right there. Bam. Do you do like bumper stickers and printable not, cards and things like not, that? Not yet. I um, I don't. When I like, I'm going to a Flattoberfest. I'm going to bring thousands of cards to give to people. Um, and they're great, great ways just to hand somebody something. So, um, cool stuff there. Good. Sorry uh, that, about that. There's a window. Tell the listeners about Flattoberfest. So Flattoberfest is uh, in October 20th and 21st in Las Vegas this year. And um, if you have the app and you just hit the shopping cart, the button for Flattoberfest is right here. And um, it's going to be a, a conference Saturday and Sunday. People are getting there. I think I'm getting there on Thursday, leaving on Monday. And it's just going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people um, listening to presentations, but it's more about um, milling around and talking with everybody. And we got some great banners to take outside. Um, and I, I have made these big banners that said, win $3,000 in casino chips. That gets everyone's attention in Vegas by offering one proof of the globe. Play as many times as you like, no purchase necessary. All right. And then we're all going to be there with our apps and, uh, and other stuff. And we're just going to be like, nope, 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 nope. Then we're going to flat smack Vegas. So, Go. If you're looking for a vacation, it's October. Vegas is amazing in October. I, and a lot of people hate Vegas. This isn't about Vegas. This is about all of us getting together at a place that has convention centers and um, lots of great food. And, you know, and if you want to gamble, feel free. Um, but it's going to be a blast. Uh, flattoberfest.com, flattoberfest.com or flatearthfestivals.com. Either one will get you there. Or just the only thing you ever need to remember is flatearthdave.com because all the links to everything I talk about is there flatearthdave.com. Well done. And when people see that sign, they might even leave the line of, to the dispensaries to come try that to, to get their $3,000 in casino chips. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's play our first voicemail. This is from Jamie. Hello, George. Uh, my name is Jamie. I'm from Manitoba, Canada. And just wondering um, what Dave's thoughts are on meteorites, comets, um, shooting stars, and um, also curious to know a little bit more about, I don't know what it's called, but the Southern, Southern lights, like the Borealis that people talk about in Australia, New Zealand. Um, what exactly is that? Is it actually real? Um, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, so meteors and asteroids are two different things. Meteors are bigger, asteroids are smaller, right? When we see an, uh, um, a meteor shower, we think of just as little lights in the sky. What are they? I don't know. We have some speculation. I think they're electrically in nature. Um, and the interesting thing is if we, if we lived on a ball, right? So here's uh, North America, and I'm watching meteor showers come down. Somebody down here would be seeing them go up, right? The, so if the earth is a ball, they're gonna come in from all different directions. So some people would see them down and some people would see them up. No one has ever seen a meteor go up. They all go down, right? That makes sense. So what are they? I don't know. I don't think there's specks of dust or you know stuff coming in. And when you look at these craters, these are all different types of craters, volcano craters, sinkholes, methane geysers, geysers, all sorts of stuff, okay? And they look exactly like these craters. They tell us this is a meteor crater, but when you compare it to, um, to a geyser, um, they, a dried up geyser, they look exactly the same. Here it's like no one ever sees a meteor shooting up from the horizon. We only see them going down, right? And um, here is some more pictures. Whoops, hold on, cancel. So meteor crater. Geyser. Like, and I'm sure if I got a geologist and showed them without the labels, 
which one's a media creator and which one's a geyser, they wouldn't get them right. Right? They even have the center, the, the, the center part, right? Media creator, geyser. Okay? Media creator, geyser. Everything is exactly the same. What do you think about that? Well done. <laughs> and uh, the Southern Lights. The Southern Lights. Well, what's the question exactly about the Southern Lights? She just wanted to know what, what they were, what caused them, that type of thing. You mean the, the, like, the, like the Northern Lights? Like the, like the lights in the sky? I think she was asking. I, I, I missed the question. Sorry. It, it was the, she wanted to know what the Southern Lights are. They can be seen, uh, I think, in New Zealand. and um, so like, like the Northern Lights, those, those wispy, those green things. Right, right, so right. it's just um, energy going through the magnetic field. We're in a giant torus field. We live on the dielectric plane in between, and there's areas where energy crosses, and that would be at the north, you know, our magnetic north where the troid comes out. And then in the south, there, there's some sort of interaction down there with that, that causes these same, same lights. All right, moving It's on. kind of like the same answer as the globe has. Right, but the globe says it comes from a molten magnetic core. And if anyone knows anything about magnets, scientifically, that's nonsense. That's pseudoscience because there is no such thing as a molten magnet. Any type of magnet anywhere in the world, you heat it. Before it melts, it hits what's called the Curie point, and it loses all magnetism. So molten magnetic core basically is saying dumb, stupid human, right, if you believe that. Yeah, and that leads me to my next point is – the, the world's deepest hole, I believe, is like in Siberia or Russia, seven and a half to eight miles deep, which coincidentally, the deepest part of the ocean is almost the, the same. I think it's seven and a half uh, to eight miles deep in the South Pacific somewhere. Um, so for for people to think that they know exactly what is at the center of the earth, um, again, this goes back to why don't we question heliocentrism? Because obviously all that <clears throat> is a guess, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, the deepest hole ever dug was the core borehole in Russia. And United States and Russia worked on it together for years and years and years. And um, they got down just under eight miles, seven and a half miles. I think it's seven point eight, but whatever it is. And uh, while they were digging, they dropped cameras down there. They dropped, uh, you know, radar down there to see what they're going to hit next. And they were wrong every step of the way. Hey, there's no more rocks. They hit rocks. Hey, there's no more water. They hit water. Right. So the 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 boring was absolutely wrong so now they tell us the core of the earth is a, you know the, the diameter of the earth is 3900 whatever miles um that would be like if you had like a macintosh apple not even a red delicious apple macintosh with the really skin thin skin you drilled a quarter of the way through that skin and you were wrong at guessing what the material was that you were going to be drilling through the whole what the whole time you were wrong 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 and then you hit an impenetrable barrier but you know what the next four thousand miles are okay exactly. This is pure pseudoscience. Nobody knows, no globe believer or flat earth believer knows what's below that. Now, is there another firmament below us? Hey, that makes sense to me. I don't know. Maybe we just live on this dielectric plane and that is the limit to where we can go. I personally don't believe that we can live anywhere else but on this plane. And I personally believe that there's more beyond where we're allowed, where, where we are allowed to go. Okay. And uh, that is all, it's all about control. So go ahead. Yeah. Would you say that all of this uh, where NASA came in and all the pseudoscience was was about the it's interesting, right? As World War II is about to kick off, you know, one of the, the Great War, uh, Germany goes down to New Schwabia with all this stuff going on. So obviously between the 30s and 50s, they found something to, to, that was so shocking that all the countries in the world like we we're ready to go with Russia. We're on the brink of war with Russia right now. But we have a treaty with them. We want to make sure that nobody goes down to Antarctica. It, uh, but it, that's all just a coincidence, right? There's two things that all of the warring, fighting, disagreeing countries in the world agree on. Nobody can go to Antarctica. Nobody can go to the North Pole. Same thing. And um, nobody, everybody needs to get the boogeyman shot in their arm. Okay? So – they all agree on that. And, and, you know, with all the wars, everything that's going on, this Antarctic Treaty is the longest standing treaty ever in history. You can't question it until the year 2041. And the, and the, the official explanation is we don't want to pollute the ice. It's the last pristine spot on Earth, which is also a lie. Japan just found 7,000 new islands. Okay. And um, 
and we have to protect the penguins. But go ahead, deforest the Amazon, the lungs of our world, do, you know, do all of this other stuff. But no one can go on the ice where nobody lives. There's no animals. There's no, no, no trees, nothing, just resources that we supposedly need. Um, and everyone just signs a treaty and goes, oh, we, we all agree there. Captain um, Admiral Byrd went there. And look, he's on news, news here. What's behind him? Huh, flat Earth map of the clock. Hmm, the sky clock, if you will. Okay, what's going on there? Sure. Right? And then um, he said he found land bigger than, uh, bigger than the United States. He said, um, this quote, in, uh, in the Webster's Dictionary, it says, Commander Byrd discovers new land in Antarctica. Okay, 1930. 1930, that's less than 100 years ago. He found new land in Antarctica. What's, what's going on with there? And you know what? They wanted to make sure nobody forgot it. So in New York, I think it was in New York, they gave them a ticker tape parade, like this crazy parade for what a great guy. You know, he found this stuff. You know, it's big. And then it all just, whoosh, it all just disappeared. It all just disappeared. Okay. So. That's crazy. Yeah. We, bet, we better get our ticker tape parade when we finally break the matrix and the veil upon men falls and people realize the, how they've been lied to. Yeah, the, the lie, you know, the, there's certain people, you know, George, you and I, and you, you were being a, um, a veteran, you know, that's hard, the hard thing to break. You know, you, you got to let go of your ego. You got to let go of, of everything and re, you know, people don't like to be, Fooled. You know, what's the saying? Um, you can fool somebody, but you can't convince them if they've been fooled. It's harder to convince of someone they've been fooled. Yep. We try to build this reality around us. And when someone says, oh, it's all wrong, you know, I'm going to rip the rug out from underneath you. Um, people aren't, you know, some people just can't handle it. And those are the, the diehard Globies. What is everyone in the world, every teacher, every scientist, every pilot, you know, in on it? No, they're just unwilling to look. And a matter of fact, they're going to fight for their own enslavement. People fight for their own enslavement. They fight to protect the globe and they don't even know the globe model. Flat earthers know the globe model 10 times better than a globe earther because if a globe earther knew half of what a flat earther knows about the globe, they would be a flat earther because the globe is, am I allowed to say retarded? Cause I'm going to say it, it's retarded. Yeah. It's retarded. <laughs> the globe is retarded. And, and it's funny, I've learned, especially everything we've seen over the last three years, you know what I'm talking about, that people will blindly defend things as long as that guy has a lab jacket and a title. Then he's oh. got to be smarter than us, right? Are you a subscriber to Crow 777 Radio? Bro, that podcast with you and him was one of the things that woke me up. He's great, yeah. Are you, are you a subscriber to his, his podcast where you get the full, the full podcast? Oh, no, 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 no. It, Crow, it's Crow, C-R-R-O-W, 777radio.com. Um, I highly recommend that everybody become a subscriber to him. Do not send your kids to college. That You are wasting your money. You're indoctrinating them. If you hit the, um, the homeschool button, whoops, what is going on there? Um, if you hit the homeschool button, um, Crow's right here. There's, this is all very, you know, this, this is college right here. But I, I told people, and I know a couple of people that are doing this actually, and their kids are amazing. Don't send your kid to school. Get them a house with a bunch of other friends. And here's the only assignment they have. Crow puts out two episodes every week, and then there's 400 past episodes. They're two hours a piece. So listen to the two new ones and three old ones. So one a day for the whole week. You can listen to it while you're bike riding, while you're kite surfing, while you're gardening while you're folding laundry, whatever it is that you want to do, listen to it. And at the end of a month, you are going to be more prepared for this world than any college will ever put you. And you'll only be $8 in debt a month. Okay. $8, right? Please, every adult, every child start listening to this. This is the podcast that's taken me to where I am. And I'm so glad you said that because a, a big portion of our community, our listeners, including myself, I homeschool my daughter. That's on your app, right? The homeschool? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's all sorts of stuff on here. There's, there's, there's so much information on here for homeschoolers. And we're adding more, more all the time. Like if you if you're um, um, you have a homeschooling group or, or website or a thing, you know, and flat, you know, and you're and you're awake to flat earth. Let me know. I'll put you on the app for free. You'll be out to hundreds of thousands of people. 
Okay. And, um, and then people can access it. Some other things on the homeschool section. I got my lunch break. Have you ever heard this guy yet? Old world stuff. He looks into these old buildings and finds out the history of the buildings. And it, it's hysterical for adults and for kids. You'll laugh and then you'll be like, wow, how did I not even understand that? And it's, it's mind blowing. Amazing stuff here. You don't need anything else. You don't even need anything else in the app. Just this page alone will, will, will keep your life busy for, um, for a long time. But um, I was saying uh, on the app, the friend finder is up. It's just hit 111,000. It's going to be 111,111 um, tonight, maybe at 1111 right there. There's a number. And um, <laughs> that should be pretty interesting. But these are the people say flat earth is dying. Nope, it's not. It's growing exponentially. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, while you have that up, you want to mention the coming features quickly? Oh, sure. So um, we have uh, the profile section where you go into the profiles. Let me click that and that. Um, it, then, then don't go looking for this on your, what's going on here? Um, hold on. There you go. Don't go looking for this yet. It's not out yet. It could be a week. It could be longer than a week. If it's longer than a week, you'll know because I'll, I'll pull out the rest of my hair. Okay. <laughs> so you can, this is, you know, it's kind of like Facebook where you have your picture, a background picture. Um, it you know, shows you how many referrals you have, your name. Um, I'm a male in a relationship. I, I'm interested in meetups. I'm offering a job. I'm looking for a job. This is just me testing. All my socials are here. Um, and then here I got my uh, friends list and suggested friends. So I can go and I could hit request. Um, and I could scroll down. This is my wall, right? I have uh, this cool guy in the UK. He's got this thing on the back of his car and it's like, it's like flatearthdave.com. It's like the ball doesn't hold water, flatearthdave.com, right? This guy's awesome. And um, this is the Flat Earth Yacht Club, okay? This is my mooring for my boat, okay? Nice. And, and people tie up to it when I'm not there and they get flat smacked. I have a QR code on it to my website. It's hysterical. Um, and so you have your wall. So when you're, when you're, when you're looking at somebody, I could, um, I could click on somebody and say, all right, let me, um, let me see what this person has. Click their profile. It takes me to their profile. I could friend request them. I can message them. Let's say I, uh, I hit message and I can message this person, right? I could send a message, just text messaging, bam, back and forth. Now you're in a conversation. Um, I can also, uh, there's groups, like let's say, um, you know, there's different driving to Flattoberfest, people that are looking for rides. So I'll click that. I'll say uh, view group. And now I'm in the group and I could talk to people, people trying to carpool to Vegas um, and, and other conversations are going on. And um, if I go back to my list here, I have a, a group. I had a group called beta test group, but, and it was just for testing. And there was like almost 300 people in it. So I, I nixed the group and I just restarted it. And now there's, um, there's uh, five people. And I said, I was going to make a call. So I'm going to hit the, 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 the speaker. I mean, not the speaker, the microphone, say, okay. And um, blows my cover here. You can see what my setup really looks like. And then it's now, it's now sent a little pop message. And here comes Run Boston Bear, who is always first. He's always first. And now uh, we can chat, you know? And uh, yeah, these awesome. amazing conversations. We, we had like 50 people in one chat once. And uh, it, was, it was crazy. What do you got to say, Run Boston Bear? I just love this uh, stationary topographical plane we're living on. There you go. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks brother. <awesome. laughs> Peace. <laughs> so there you go. That is awesome. You, yeah. You're building a, um, a, a social network within uh, an app that already gives so much. The, the, the questions, you get a video every day. They're under five minutes during the week, and they're a little longer on the weekends. Oh. If you have a questions, there, I think there's 21 question marks. You can click on the commonly asked questions. And well, there's it's, a it's, actually, it's actually more than 21 questions now because uh, we've added more. It was 21. I've added another row, and there's going to be another row coming below that. So I, we can add more. This is the more resources page, I call it. It's the web button, the one that looks like a spider web. And um, here's something very important. YouTube is hide, not only hiding, the guy got some warnings, like some of my channels, luckily there's a small channel, like we, we don't like, uh, we're, we're limiting, you can no longer upload at fast speeds and you can't do this, you can't put thumbnails and you can't go live. I'm expecting that to happen to my other channels. But um, 
here are all my interviews like with yours um you'll be if you put on youtube it'll be in this playlist but everything goes here to the web three all the videos all the featured videos everything so if youtube goes down you want to click this button and also you want to check this button now this is web three this is the new internet the blockchain internet it's super high quality it's amazing and if you set up an account there and you start liking videos and watching videos you literally earn a cryptocurrency that adds up to money. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So everyone is going to be on this eventually. Uh, the whole app is going to be on this eventually, but I encourage people to check it out. FlatEarthDave.tv is where you can find all this stuff if you don't have the app. FlatEarthDave.tv. And for those of you, by the way, anyone that's downloading the app while we talk, I don't want to wait till the end of the show. The first thing you see is, do you have a referral code? And your referral code should be F E files all one word fe files and that way george will get credit for like oh george turned you on and then uh george george will get up there on the leaderboard i'll show you the leaderboard um this is uh this is the top 100 people um you know that that refer that get people to join the app kind of fun right and also the app is three dollars Okay, Dave, why are you always pushing the app? Because it's the best way to wake people up. I'm sorry, All right? I also, I push other things that um, well, people that I don't even like because they have great ways to wake people up. Um, the app's $3, but if you want to message people, if you want to play games with other people, um, you have to, it's a subscription of $11 a year. $11 a year. Find me a subscription that's less money than that. But if you have referrals, you can trade in 11 referrals for a free subscription. So- there, there you go, go guys. There you go. And I told Dave that we, we by the end of September, we'll, we'll definitely be in the top three. So again, when you do, if you don't have this app, please take the time. It's three bucks. Uh, you spend more on a double latte mocha at, at Starbucks than you would for something that's going to give you uh, invaluable knowledge. But please uh, use FE files, you know, Flat Earth files. Make sure you, so we get on the leaderboard and we can let Dave know, you know, how impactful our community really is. To folks listening on the podcast, just a reminder, this is available on Rumble. If you want to see the full, get the full effect of this interview, go to our Rumble channel, which will be embedded in the podcast so you can watch uh, the entire broadcast. I want to ask you another question, then I need to start running down these uh, listener questions. I want to get everybody's questions asked. Do it. In, in your thoughts, what is the ISS? The International Fake Station. Okay. So we had, I had a, a NASA whistleblower that was emailing me. Now, could be anybody, right? It could be a scammer. But um, going back and forth and the stuff he was saying became more and more and more credible. And I would give anyone odds that it was a real NASA person. And he was actually fleeing the country. Um, and he disappeared in the when, it, when our conversation got really good. And I actually published our, a transcript of, um, the, of all of our emails, which is amazing. But he said, there's different ways they trick us on the ISS. Um, when we see a transit of the moon, that's one trick, or the sun of the moon, that's just a high-flying aircraft whizzing by the moon, and it's a B, B-2 bomber, an old World War II B-2 bomber that has been re-outfitted with some transparent parts and LED lights on the bottom that are at the same um, tone as the sun. And I, when I was questioning about the transparent parts, he goes, yeah, it's transparent not transparent aluminum. I think that's from Star Trek. It's some transparent mylar with, with metal thin struts in it. And from that distance, you can't see the struts. You just see through it. So they fashion it to look like the ISS, you know, or what we think the ISS should look like. Um, so that's for the transits. I have personally looked at the ISS tracker, seen it come up on the horizon, cross over my sky. It takes about seven, eight minutes to go from horizon to horizon. Now I'm on the East Coast. It's going 17,000 miles an hour. It should be in California before of that much time goes by. How am I seeing something the size of an airplane, 50 times higher than an airplane, right? Think of a 747, gigantic when you're standing next to it. But at cruising altitude, it's tiny. It's a tiny little gray dot in the sky. And at double that altitude, you could not see it. It's too small, right? A an airplane... Cruising altitude is about five miles. At 10 miles, you couldn't see it. 15 miles, absolutely couldn't see it. The ISS is 50 times higher than that. 50. And we think we could see it with our negative eye. So what is it? I was, um, 
I was first thinking that maybe it's just a fast moving wandering star, like, you know, the things that we call planets. Um, but I've kind of moved away from that. And I think it's just um, what the guy from NASA was telling me that it is, uh, there's five of these planes, two of them are based in Alaska. Um, I think one of them's in Russia and I don't, I forget where the other two are and they take turns um, just following this route, circling our flat plane because there's times where you're watching the ISS where it literally just disappears and then it shows up an hour later on that path, right? There, it's like, oh, the, you're going to find it here, here. And then the path just stops. Like, wait a minute. What, why did it just stop at this place? Right. And how can I see it? And someone, uh, you know, on the other side of Connecticut can't see it at the same time. That to me says it's something much lower, something man-made. I mean, the ISS would be man-made. Let me ask you a question. Would the ISS be considered in the top three, if not the number one construction projects of all time? Oh, of course. I mean, it would be right up there with the, the Apollo 11, the lunar lander and that really cool buggy they had, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, the 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 question is, the guys that built it, the engineers that built it, they'd probably be best at putting it together. Do they send the engineers to space to build it, or do they just send a bunch of astronauts like Don Pettit and other people to build it, right? And so if they're doing that, um, they would have to, you know, mission control, mission control would be like, have to tell them, you know, move this, add that, do this, right? And we on spacewalks, what do we see? It takes them eight hours to put one nut on something, right? So this is a animation of the ISS being built. It was never assembled here on Earth, and they didn't take any video or pictures of it being assembled. As a matter of fact, some of the modules were made in the United States, some were made in Russia or wherever, and they had different doors, so they had to create a third piece to make an adapter. Okay, never tested, never, no seals, nothing. And all of this was done and no one ever took a picture. No one took a picture or video. This would be the number one most videoed construction project of all time. There's no video of it being built. Okay. None whatsoever. And the other thing is, you know, this is a Chinese um, space station now. It literally showed up out of nowhere. This is it. This is them showing us their space station. <laughs> and brutal, uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, they forgot to film it also. Okay. They forgot to film it, right? They're showing crap like that, <laughs> right? Just and, and here's the launch. Let's just move forward here, right? You got all this smoke and this thing goes up and all these people clapping. We zoom in on these people. They're not looking. They're looking in the wrong directions. So this is not, this isn't a real launch. Where's the smoke trail? I see a little, a little something. I, I think this is just like balloon going up with some lights. And whenever they zoom in close and show you nothing below, this is nothing. This is all, this is not in the air. And then when they keep switching back and forth, I, that's provably fake. Um, and then all of a sudden they switch to animation. Oh, they always show you the curve of the earth, you know, at that weird angle. And um, this is them deploying a piece and just throw it in the space and everything works perfectly. It's the dumbest crap ever. Right. For, for 2023, that's some awful animation, man. Yeah. Wait, wait. It, it gets worse than that. You've seen the water. They left a glass of water on the table. Oops. Yeah. Got, left a glass of water. 500 miles an hour. It's not even moving. Not 500. It's 17,000 miles an hour. And there's yeah, no yeah. gravity. There's no gravity. Okay. So it should be everywhere, right? The, the, know, the water. And the, and the globe zealot, you know, the anti flat earth, there's. Uh, the, the Reds rhetorics, they'll go surface tension, man, the surface tension is holding it in. Meanwhile, Don Pettit is on an interview saying that, um, you know, he, uh, he um, created a glass, a, um, a, uh, a, um, a cup made out of folded plastic because you can't drink liquid on, on the ISS um, out of a regular cup. So there goes the, the, the defenders of that. Um, just trying to find, I have that image somewhere. Where is it? Um, I had it somewhere. Um, coffee cup. Where is it? All right. Well, that'll, that'll come back. Um, where is it? I wanted to show that. That's a good one. And it's gone. It'll come back. Um, so he's got this cup and he's drinking out of it. And why he's drinking out of it, literally the coffee offsets from the cup for a couple seconds, showing that it's just a CGI trick that they're doing in a studio. 
Interesting. The, yeah. Two two things I want to add on there is I'm a ham radio operator, and uh, you can also a couple once or twice a day I forget, but you can actually you can pick up and some people uh, are able to have a conversation on the ham radio with with the uh, with the ISS. And it's funny if they're really going at seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour. And I noticed this back in the day when I was doing this in Texas. You can talk to them way too long. They, they're they're in the area way too long if they're truly going at that speed. That's a nice trick. That's a, I, I heard, I've heard that. I just I haven't paid much attention to it, but that, that's just a nice trick. <laughs> absolute, absolute nonsense. Um, yeah. Did you see that, uh, that you, you remember a couple of years ago, India was going to land on the moon and then it was going yeah. and everyone's there. And then all of a sudden it just crashed. It just blacked out. Like, oh, it crashed. And everyone's like, yay. I mean, everyone's like, oh, you know, it was like all good. Well, guess what? India is orbiting the moon now. They're going to be landing October 20th. Here's the footage from their, from their um, new spacecraft. Oh, that's legit. This is their actual footage. Just a, so that's that's a solar panel, like the the trick you do on people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I on my channel D I T R H. Everybody, please subscribe to D I T R H on YouTube. All short videos are great videos to show people. Um, it stands for deep inside the rabbit hole. You know, somebody new is not going to watch a Hibbler video, a you know, full length video or, or, or a Warren on, you know, his five hour video. But if they start watching mine, it's kind of like crack. You're just giving them a couple pebbles here and there. And then after a while, they want the whole bag. So yep. they won't be uh, sleeping I, for a while. That's yeah, for I sure. did a video. My last video um, is the transcript from this because this is in Italian. I think it's Italian. Um, I did a, a, a translation. Um, and it's it's hysterical. The, the the audio is literally comical, and I set it to cl clown music, of course. <laughs> nice. All right, I'm going to get to our uh, second voicemail. This is from Laurie. Hi, George. This is Laurie from Ojai, California, and I have a question for um, your conversation with David Weiss, which I'm looking forward to. Um, my question is about the moon phases. Um, I believe the moon is, is its own light, especially when it's full. I've just been noticing the last couple of weeks as it's not full, it's just um, in a different phase and there's only a sliver of a moon or a half a moon, but I've noticed that the sun is on the side of the moon that's uh, lit up. And so it's like, that causes me to wonder, um, is the sun reflecting on the moon? So um, yeah, I, I look forward to getting an answer to that question because that is something I'm wondering about. Um, I'm not 100% sure about flat earth, but I'm leaning very heavily in that direction. But the, the moon phases <clears throat> has been stumped. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie, appreciate it, Dave. Yeah, so so first thing I want to say is um, looking up at the lights in the sky to determine the shape of the Earth isn't the best practice, but we do need to talk about it. So if you actually understand what the inverse square law of light is, it's that light that is coming from its own source or even reflecting off something. Every time you double the distance, it's half of the brightness because light spreads out, just like sound spreads out. If you were standing in front of me, you could hear me half a mile away. I doubt you'd be able to hear me. You know, a mile away, you can't because it just spreads out, becomes thin. Light does the same thing. So when we look at the moon a quarter of a million miles away, they, they tell us on a full moon, clear night in the middle of nowhere, I could read a book by it, it casts my shadow on the ground. It's bright. It's casting my shadow on the ground. If I went halfway to the moon, it's four times brighter. Halfway again, 16. Halfway again, 64. I make it all the way to 100 miles from the moon, where the astronauts took that famous picture, and it would be 60 times brighter than the sun, something you can't even fathom. You can't even fathom twice as bright as the sun because you can't even look at the sun. Okay? That's right. So, so the closer you get to an object that's reflecting light off of it, the brighter that object should be. Okay, so let's look at this brick, this uh, this cement brick, which I'm standing five feet from at noon. Okay, how come it's not 60 times brighter than the sun? How come it's not casting a shadow on me? How come it's not? How come I can't read by it if it was, you know, there's not enough light coming off of it? And I would argue that this cement ball is more reflective than the dusty moon. Absolutely. Okay? So as far as the, the, um, the phases, I think the phases definitely are related to the position from the sun for sure. The sun is electrical in my 
understanding and the moon, the, it's the anode and cathode and the sun um, is when it's directly across from the moon, across the earth, the whole moon is lit. But when it's off to the side, if the, or if the moon is a sphere, which I'm not hundred percent sure, um, we're only gonna see that half moon because that light is only that energy, which is making the moon fluoresce. I don't think that the, the, it's just casting light on the moon. I think it's sending electricity to the moon and the moon is fluorescing just like the sky fluoresces. The sky fluoresces blue because the, most of the upper atmosphere is nitrogen and nitrogen fluoresces blue. I think that's one of the reasons that the sky is blue. Okay. So that's, uh, that's why I think that's how I think phases work. Um, Karen B does a lot on moon phases and I think on the app there, there might be, um, a moon phases section. I, I forget, but if there's not, we're going to add one soon. Very good. Thanks for explaining that. Dan asks, what are solar flares in your opinion? That is the question of the, of the day. All right. So solar flares, um, they want us to believe that there's these big explosions coming off the sun that are going to wipe out humanity. Um, I think that they are energetic pulses coming from our energetic sun. And I've asked a question recently and nobody has, has, has been brave enough to answer yet. Is it possible? Think if the flat earth is, you know, what we think and the sun and the moon are within the earth and everything's electrical in the sky and the dome is a positive charge and the earth is a negative charge. And, um, uh, you know, the sun and the moon or the anode and cathode, there's sparks going off. What happens when you send a piece of metal towards the sun of rocket and it's going up there above where we're supposed to be? According to the Bible says we're not supposed to go up there and take pictures. Um, could, could rocket launches cause these energetic pulses from the sun? I could be a thousand percent wrong on this one, but I'm wondering if there's a core, if somebody had all the data from when rocket launches go off and when solar flares happen, and if there's any correlation, it's just a question that I have. And it's uh, I have zero proof that any of that could even possibly be true, but I'm looking to see if there's a correlation and then it would inv it involve further um, investigation. What is it? I think that we go through these cycles and uh, maybe these solar flares are, um, giving us energy. I know that when we have an eclipse, um, things happen. You know, when I, I watched an eclipse um, with my naked eyes for an hour and a half, and the only thing that happened to me is my eyesight got better. And I became, I, I, I could speak clearer, I think. Okay. I literally, I think it made me smarter. Okay. I think it opened up my consciousness in some way. So maybe these solar flares are, um, you know, have to do with the, uh, with the awakening of mankind, the energetics of this world. Man, that's really interesting because what do they tell us about the eclipses? They tell us not to look at them, right? And they give out free glasses to blind you. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Check this out. Paige and I are sitting at the beach. Okay. And the, the eclipse is happening. We have about an 80% eclipse here and it takes like an hour and a half. Right. And so we're sitting there, we're watching it. We don't even, and the, the, unfortunately or fortunately, the sky had a lot of uh, um, a chem fog in it, which actually made it dim the sun enough so we could really look at it. I'm a sun gazer, end of the day, you know, I could stare at the sun, no problem. And um, it was actually, we're watching it without our sunglasses on for the whole time. There's this woman on the beach and she's doing something really weird. She's got her mirrored sunglasses, she's putting them on the ground and she's got her phone and she's going like this, right? She's going like this. I go, I go, what are you doing? And she goes, well, I'm trying to take a picture of the eclipse in my glasses, but I don't want to look at my at it too long because I might go blind, right? She's afraid to look at the reflection in her glasses and on her iPhone that she's trying to video the reflection in her glasses. And I'm like, do you see that two of us are sitting here staring at the sun for the last hour? Didn't, re didn't register. <laughs> it didn't, didn't register. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome it's it's uh joe it's, asks i'm sorry go ahead i was just gonna say it makes me lose faith in humanity <laughs> <laughs> uh joe asks does the sun move faster in the southern hemisphere obviously like looking at your second hand there we know it takes 60 seconds to go around but uh as it goes closer to what the tropic of capricorn i guess is it actually moving faster speed wise um, speed wise, absolutely, it's moving faster. And if you look at the analemma, right, the analemma has the big circle in the south, 
and then the smaller circle in the north and they both the, each circle is completed at the same time so the sun is going faster and slower right it's on the hour hand so the angular speed is exactly the same and so this is a lot of things that globers don't get they're like you know the they're, they're like well, we don't feel the spin of the earth and you know that's because you're going one around once a day yeah but if you were on a merry-go-round that was regular size merry ground it spun once a day you'd barely be able to tell it's moving expand that thing out to 24 miles in circumference it's now going a mile an hour you'd definitely be able to sense the movement now spend it out to 2400 miles right now it's going a hundred miles an hour would you sit on that outside horse going a hundred miles an hour on that merry-go-round 100 miles an hour curving Okay, right. now, now spread it out to 24,000 miles, right? The circumference of the world. You're going 1,000 miles an hour. You're going off your trajectory, curving over a mile a minute, okay? Changing your trajectory. One, you couldn't sit on it. You'd be thrown off. And two, it would be insane, right? Even if the air was spinning with you, the, another retarded heliocentric claim, okay? So they don't understand because they've been programmed not to understand angular velocity versus um, versus uh, uh, tangent, tangential, 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 I can't say it, speed. Um, so is there any proof of this? Yes, because equal latitudes on a ball, you got the ball spinning. So the sun goes up to the north, you know, in the summer, in our summer, and then it goes down to the Tropic of Capricorn. So at a certain, de whatever degrees um, north you are in June, the equal degrees south in December should have the same lighting effect, should have the same, you should have the same thing, but we don't. And there's areas in the south that are, that are low lying, like Ush Ushuaia, um, where there's no mountains to the east or west. And they have like 17 hours of daylight in December. And that's because the light from the sun, the daylight, which is not sunlight, um, can travel a lot farther. When you have a mountain in the distance, it'll, it'll block all of the light. It'll block everything. So in, uh, in December, in places in Africa and South America, when it goes from light to dark, that an equal latitude to where we are here, it, when the sun sets, five minutes, it's pitch black. But six months later, when the sun sets here, Two hours later, it's still light, okay? And that's because the sun is staying closer to us in the north, making this, this loop. But out here, it's whizzing, getting farther away, okay? So the only way to explain the analemma and that is a faster-moving sun on a flat earth. It makes no sense on the globe. The problem is people aren't trained to think they're trained to memorize and regurgitate, and none of that's in the textbooks. Thank you, Rockefellers. Um, Adrian from Seattle has a two-part question. Pardon me. Have you seen the movie The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, and what are the current restrictions on dir uh, dirigibles? I've heard you talk about the blimps bringing them back, and how can we get them back? They, you know, NASA controls all the helium in the world because God forbid we have helium. For those of you that don't know, the Hindenburg was a complete and total hoax. Yes, something blew up. I don't know if anyone died. I wasn't there. But they demonized hydrogen. They linked it to hydrogen bombs. Again, another hoax. And NASA controls all the helium. So there's always a helium shortage, just enough for party balloons and Macy's Day Parade balloons, but not enough for dirigibles, okay? Because if we had dirigibles, you don't need... Endless fuel. You go up there with a couple solar panels and a fan, and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're going. And people are like, well, you can't. They're not really practical. You just have that little thing underneath. No, no, no. There's literally like a cruise ship inside there. There's elevators on these things. Okay. Here's something that I want you all to do. Okay. You have most of you have Instagram, um, and if you go, if you go on the homeschooling section, this guy right here, Jake. His Instagram is all one word. I'm the improbable dreamer. I'm the improbable dreamer. And at the date of this recording, he just put out a whole bunch of stuff on dirigibles. You watch this stuff and you're going to be like, M efforts. They, they totally made us believe in nonsense. Watch this guy. This guy is going to teach you about the old world. And he doesn't make any positive claims. He's like, look at this, look at this, look at this, explain this, explain this, explain this. This is the best. 
This is what the internet is made for. This guy right here. Instagram. I'm the improbable dreamer. If you forget it, he's right there in the homeschool section. And there's a lot of people that are like-minded. Steven in North Carolina asks, um, what are your thoughts on starting a crowdfunding project where we send a balloon or a blimp? His idea is to start in South America as far down as he can get, maybe Chile, and try to get it to Antarctica to see how, how you going to recover it. Get- you have to go recover them. You have to drive and then go recover it. And uh, you, you have to have cell tower service. There's no cell towers. There's no way to recover it. You can't do it. They won't let you do it. And it's not, you can't do it. I'm not a naysayer. I'm just telling you, logistically, it doesn't work. There you go. Um, let's see. The next question is from, well, we already talked about that. Here we go. This is a great from Kalon. What was Dave's breaking point or process that opened his eyes to flat earth? And did you struggle with it, uh, with accepting it as fact? And have you had growing pains as time goes on with new information that comes out so fast? You know, every day there's something. Just like today, by the way, um, the dude from Australia, they just launched another thing from space. The Virgin Atlantic guy. Oh, boy. Let's, we're going to go over <laughs> go over those frauds if you want. If we have time. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm good to go. I'm good. I'm, I'm on with Owen Benjamin. Uh, we're going on Anthony Cumia at, in, a couple, in two hours from now. Oh, you know, wow. So how much longer can, can yeah, we do 30 I'm, more minutes? Or we, can do, minutes? we can do 30 easy. Yeah, no problem. Um, Thank you. That's an involved question. Uh, it's uh, um, It was boats over the horizon that got me because I live on the water and I bought a P900. It had just come out at the time and I zoomed in and saw stuff that I shouldn't have been able to say. And then I said, all right, the curve calculator is wrong. And I went to the debunking sites to see what they say it was. But even with their ridiculous, you know, you got to cut it in half because it's a hump, not a, not a curve. Um, I still could see things that were below where I should be able to see them. And so that was a, that was a big one for me. Um, whoops, let me go out of here. Let me grab that. Um, and what, when I zoomed in on stuff like this, if I can make that bigger, there we go, where things just disappear. You can see them, right? You zoom in, they come back. And that made me start wondering, like, okay, what is going on, you know, with, with the way we see? There's a mountain. The mountain and the boats disappear, okay? So once you understand that, um, you know, that it was the being able to see too far, right? Here's uh, this mountain and from Malibu should be uh, over 7,000 feet of curvature. We should barely see the very tip of this mountain. And you can't see it. You take a regular picture, blue sky. This is infrared, okay? This is Jay Tolan Media. Right. Infrared camera. There it is. So what's it? And infrared cuts down on refraction. You want to call it refraction? There should be less. There it is. Right. It, it actually cuts down on refraction. So it's stuff like that. And then I'm sure you've seen. Oh, this is one. This is one. There should be. Uh, this mountain, it should. What does it say? I can't I can't see it. It's blocked for me. Um, Earth curves. <laughs> Yeah, 19,000 feet of curvature. I don't think this mountain, from this elevation, okay? 19,000 feet. Right. I don't think this mountain is 19,000 feet. Now we can see most of the mountain, okay? Right. So, so again, refraction, you want to, you, people just love saying refraction, right? Because it yeah. doesn't make any sense whatsoever um, when they do that. But they, you know, if you, if you say refraction, it makes you feel better because you don't have to reassess your whole world, Right. So this one, you, you've seen this one, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So so this one is um was quite interesting. We got these eight mountains over seven hundred miles away. Now, when you're up high, you can see farther. Bit one because you're up higher, but it, the air is clearer, less thick. You don't have as much moisture. These mountain tops should be forty plus miles below a physical curve. Forty plus miles, right? And the only thing they can say is, oh, they're refracting up and they're magically stopping at eye level, all of them, okay? This is something you can go verify yourself, right? That is absolute insanity. And um, let's get into, so we don't run out of time. Um, This is the other one I wanted to show you. So you're on a plane. It's not the scale, of course. And it's nighttime and you're in the pilot's cabin and you're looking out the front and you can see these stars on the horizon. Right, They're, those stars are on your horizon out the front window of the plane. Right, with me? Yep. You're looking out the front window of the plane as you fly south. 
you're flying over the ball. So the, 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 they're now no longer in front of you. They're now over your head, right? That physically has to happen. All right. So this is a flight from, from Beirut, I think to um, South America and we're watching the stars and they're not processing. They should go up over 40 degrees. That's huge. They're not going up as we're flying over the ball. They're not going up. Google Earth says if you fly over the ball, this is what should happen. See, the stars are going up. They should be going up like this, right? And so we put this out there and the globe trolls say, oh, that's because um, it's the spin of the Earth is countering. Well, we're not flying east. We're flying south. Okay, so if anything, the spin of the Earth should just make the stars go sideways. Well, the stars are going sideways a little bit. They only change when the pilot changes direction. Um, and they're, they're saying it's the spin of the Earth. Okay, you know what? You want to you hold on to that? Um, that means if we're, going, if, the, if, the, if we're going with the spin of the Earth and the stars are going with us and that's negating it, when we fly back, it should be twice as fast. The stars should be processing up twice as fast because they were neutralized out the first time. That's like, you know, you're, you're driving down the road and there's a car going the same speed as you. And you say, oh, you know, you, you, you could say that the car is not moving, right? But then if you're driving the other way and that car is moving, you're going to go right by each other. So the same thing should happen. This pilot filmed it in both directions. Zero procession. That's it. Taboo says, throw out my laser tests, throw out the, the mirror flashes, throw out everything. No, you can't blame this on refraction. You can't blame this on a bad curve calculator. You can't say it's a parabola. You can't say anything because when you're flying over a ball, the stars in front of you should end up over your head. And if you claim it's the spin of the earth, um, you're, you're out. You're out. What do you think about that? that that's awesome. And, and the other video that's kind of making the rounds is that the pilot uh, which is awesome. He he doesn't hide his face or anything. He says, look, we're flying level. There's the gyroscope. And he just kind of sits back and drinks his coffee and he flies completely level. Whereas, you know, you do the math, these guys are constantly on a ball. You would have to be constantly nosing down to, to maintain right. a, a certain level. So, so like, let's say you saw this and you're like, wow, that's great. And then tonight you're talking to somebody and you're like, oh, you know, I saw this thing and you're trying to describe it. Go to the app. Clip the, click the web button, scroll down to, I just loaded this for the first time, so it's got to load one time. Scroll down to Flat Earth Facts right here, right? Click that button, and all of those, vid those two videos are the top two videos right there, okay? And here's uh, the video on the 700 miles and a whole bunch of other laser tests. All of the stuff is here, all right? You can learn how to do your own tests by watching these and then go out and verify it yourself. Don't believe a video, but these videos actually document enough to show you that it's real. You don't really need to do it. They're really hard to do. A pain in the ass, you go out and freeze yourself at night and it's freezing and <laughs> batteries and traveling miles and miles and miles in between, you know, 20, 30 miles, you know, and then bad cell service, all this stuff happens. It's all been done for you, okay? It's all been done. The globe is dead. It's over. It's over, and the only thing you need is that airplane video. That's it. That's that's phenomenal. Um, I hope everybody takes it and runs with it. Uh, Kathy from Arizona asks, we've seen how emergency landings and flight paths were perfectly on a flat earth uh, by flat earth banjo, but sometimes flight, uh, I'm sorry, but sometimes flights take advantage of the jet streams and deviate from a straight trajectory. Do you know if these mostly, uh, uh, if these are mostly Southern flights and how can we convince Globers the path an airplane takes is wildly off course due to jet streams and not because we live on a globe? Thank you, Kathy. Well, the, the, um, lots of times the flights, the big one that they talk about, which is uh, Santiago to Australia, um, is canceled at the last second, and they end up putting you on connecting flights, right? And uh, other times they, they go, and the, flight, the flight's five hours late five hours. That's a huge discrepancy, right? Okay. 
Um, and that's because the, these wind patterns change. On the app I'm showing you right here, this shows you the wind patterns. These white and pink areas, these could be going 300 miles an hour. There might be faster winds up there that they're not even telling us about, okay? Because it's all in this toroidal field. So how fast is it moving? I don't know. It could be 500 mile an hour winds. Think about that. A 500 mile an hour tailwind plus a 500 mile an hour speed you're going a thousand miles an hour and you haven't even broken the sound barrier because you're in the wind column, right? So, and the people say, well, it only works one way. Well, this is going this way and this one's going this way. There's these, at different altitudes, there's, diff, there, there's all different rotating um, vortices. And you ever notice when you're on a, you're taking a flight, you got to make a connection. They're late, something happens. The flight's 30, 40 minutes late, but then you get in the air and you end up landing on time. They always make up the time. They're like, all right, this plane needs to make up 30 minutes. So they'll put it into a faster column. They'll let the pilot go a little bit faster and they get they keep everything on schedule. It happens all the time, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so so they're, you know, and the, the flight that does the Santiago um, to Australia or Auckland, um, it, it's a special plane. It's a, it's a Dreamliner, and it has seven layers of heat-resistant paint. It can only be flown by half a dozen military pilots, right? You think these guys know anything? Probably. Probably, right? And, uh, yeah. you know, and even northern flights, you know, California to, um, where is this going? Uh, somewhere in Italy or, or where it's going. It goes up. This is the great circle. That doesn't really make sense, right? But if you look at it on a flat earth map, it's a straight line touching the same points. Same points. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Southern flights are the best and, and the emergency landings are the best. If you, if you, if you don't have this book as a coffee table book, this book is literally, it's like um, flat earth leprosy. If you touch it, you're infected. Okay. <laughs> Put it on your coffee table. No one reads one emergency landing. They're like, how does that work? They didn't, they didn't get, uh, you know, the, how did they get to where they were going in, uh, in no time at all, right? So, you know, this one, emergency landing in Seattle, it's like a thousand miles out of the way. They got there in 15 minutes. Well, Seattle's right on, on, the, on that flight path, right? Flight path. There's another one. They went all the way to Moscow. It doesn't look big here. This is this is just measure it out. You know, this is a thousand or fifteen hundred miles. Moscow is right on the flat Earth fl flight path. Okay, another one. Moscow even farther. They get there like that. Emergency landing, right? Um, and all of them just coincidentally are uh, you know on 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 flight. You know, on the, on the flat Earth um, flight path. New York. To Auckland, emergency happened here. They went to Fiji. Okay. Why'd they go to Fiji? Because Fiji is directly on that flight path on a flat earth map. Right. And my favorite is the dead mom. Airplane going from Hong Kong, going all the way to UK. Um, it's a 12 hour flight. And four hours into the flight, right about here, uh, the mother dies. Kids, father, all sitting with her. Mom's dead. Right. Could you imagine sitting next to your mother alive for 12 hours? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a little joke, a little joke, you know, like you can only take so much sitting next to your mom, but she's dead. Your little kid, a husband, happy family, dead mother. Why yeah. didn't they land here, here? Why didn't they land? You can probably find, I bet there's a hundred airports they could have landed at. Right. And the answer is because if they landed, two things could have happened. One, on a flat earth, they're over Russia. So if they landed and Russia says, oh my God, and they were helpful and they helped the family and they got the, you know, the, they got the care, the mortician, whatever, whatever they had to do, that could spark peace. We can't have that in this time. Oh, right? can't. And then no. the other thing is somebody like me or you or a million other people would go, what the hell were they doing over Russia? And then somebody would go, they're looking at the flat earth, right? And it would be a problem. So they had to wait until they got all the way to Frankfurt. At that point, those kids are damaged for life. Why didn't they just finish their trip home? Okay. Why didn't yeah, they just go, to, you know, just go to another hour? Okay. And land them where they were going. Okay. What is going on here? Wake up, people. Yeah. Next question. Question is Raul, and he's a friend of ours from the Firmamental podcast. He asked, with all these forest fires, uh, he was wondering why the smoke stays localized to very specific areas as if we were 
Uh, I'm sorry, because if we were on a rotating planet, wouldn't that smoke be traveling all over the place? What's your opinion? Well, gravity holds the air down and it spins with the Earth. But a summer breeze defies gravity because it could blow the air left and right. And, you know, I could take a little fan and blow air up away from gravity, but gravity locks all of the air and spins it with the Earth around while it's adjacent to a zero pressure, no pressure vacuum, low, you know, which is scientifically impossible. Did you get tired of just, of, of just going proof after proof after proof after proof and wondering why the hell these people don't wake up? And they go, you, you're science. You know, I, um, I was listening to Kumia go off on Flat Earth, which sparked the reason that Owen and I are going on. And uh, he's playing the Professor Dave uh, you know, debacle oh, okay. that, that, that with me. And Professor Dave just keeps quoting, oh, this, you know, this, this is true, and this is true, and this is true. And I said, I said what, where, show me the science. And they're like, he just showed you the science. No, quoting something from a textbook is not the science. That's just a claim yeah. in a textbook. Okay, show me the science. I'll show you the science for Flat Earth. Flat Earth are not science deniers. We are science, hold your feet to the science fire, people. We're all better wake up soon, are, man. <laughs> What's that? I know, but has it Professor Dave already came out and admitted that he like hires people to do all the questions and, uh, and mathematics for him? Even if that was the case, you know, uh, he did he did admit that. But uh, anybody that um that that you know, was you Google like I was Googling Anth I was trying to find Anthony Kumi a flat earth thing. I typed in Anthony Kumi a flat earth, and what comes up? Professor Dave. Okay. I didn't type in Professor Dave, I typed in Anthony Kumia. Okay. I typed in the exact title of the podcast and Pro professor dave comes up so what does that tell you all right but um on the on the web button page if you scroll down to debunking the debunkers okay all if you like i saw something on national geographic or i saw professor dave destroyed the david weiss no that's not true because um professor dave gets destroyed by Fl flat earth dave humiliates professor dave right here OK, this is for anybody that is willing to, you know, not listen to a guy with an accent and uh, talk condescendingly and go, oh, he must be right. He's got professor in front of his name. I'm Professor Flat Earth Dave, by the way. OK, I identify as Professor Flat Earth Dave. Right. So, again, the National Geographic bunk is here. If somebody goes, what about uh, the laser gyro and uh, and uh, Jaron uh, with the laser test and behind the curve? Watch this four minute video. Four minutes. Three minute video, three and a half minute video. Um, it explains that that actually proved the earth is flat, but the movie was edited. Again, all of the debunks are here. You know, what about shadows on the clouds? All here. All of the debunks are here. Okay. And it's not just us saying, you're wrong, we're right. We're showing you the deception, we're showing you the science. Okay. All of oh, this stuff awesome. is hidden on YouTube. It's all hidden. You can't find it. It's all hidden. Why is it hidden? Yeah, I miss the old YouTube days when you could actually put something in the search engine and find what you're looking for. If you put in uh, Flat Earth now, uh, I think actually one of the, the top two things you get is uh, that, that Professor Dave guy. Absolutely, 100%. Um, that, that is the case. And, you know, the, the, this, the app breaks the algorithm every day there's a featured video here what i tell people is you know when you gift the gift the gift the app to somebody just say the featured video just just when you're having your breakfast watch the featured video one short video that's it you want to watch another one watch what comes after it because i break the algorithm because it's in a playlist right so they they don't get to suggest what comes next if i sent if i sent you one video on circumnavigation the next video would be on how you know the flat earth is retarded okay because that's what YouTube will do, no, no matter what. You know, they'll pop Professor Dave up, they'll pop whatever, trying to, uh, trying to sway you. But the app doesn't allow that because everything, you know, is, 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 is um, in a playlist. So if you, if, you're, if you want more, hit the archive button. You can go back four years, five years now, I think. Okay, 2018. All the videos are organized by year and month. And uh, that'll keep you busy forever. Okay? Absolutely. Tons of stuff on here. Let me, awesome. let me, we, let me just show you, let me just show you real quick. When you want to gift the app to somebody, you can go into settings or just go to the app store and you say gift to a friend. Now this is just for Apple. It's going to bring you to the app store. And all, all you do is you scroll. Oh, you go right. Um, let me, let me change that. 
it brings you to the app store. You just got to hit this little share button right there. And when you hit that, this will pop up, scroll up a little bit and you'll see gift. And then you could gift it to another Apple user in your same country. You can't gift it to somebody that has, uses a different currency. Okay. Gotcha. So, so that's that. And if you want to gift it to add to, um, to uh, Android users, you have to send me a, send an email, go to my website, you just contact Dave and say, Hey, I want to gift it. I want to buy uh, I'll, you know, five or 10 or whatever. And then uh, um, I can, you can pay via crypto or PayPal or Venmo and then we'll, we'll send it to you. We even discount if you do, um, if you do a whole bunch. So, and can you know. they still use the referral code uh, FE files if they gift oh, it? Or absolutely. Is that you can, no, no, no. Anybody that downloads the app, whether it's gifted, whether they paid for it, what, you know, whatever, you just put in FE files, F E F I L E S, no spaces. And, um, and then your app will do a little song and dance and uh, you'll see that somebody downloaded it. And what's better than that? knowing that you're, that you're really waking people up. It's really a great feeling. Every flat earther, we all want to do the same thing. Every day, all we want to do is wake other people up to flat earth. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. No greater feeling. And last question, then we'll wrap it up. And you've been really generous with your time. And uh, thank you to everyone who sent questions in. And many of them were kind of like-minded. But this one is, how do we account for the fact that the stars only circle the North Star north of the equator? From what I could do, finding my own research, stars directly above the equator travel in a straight line, and the stars south of the equator circle uh, a point in the southern sky. And that is from James. Yeah, so um, there's a southern star rotation button right here. Um, lots of great videos on that, but I'll give you a quick explanation here. And that explanation is, you know, the, the big one is, why do, they, why do they go counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south? And you've been trained that the only way that works is on a ball, right? So right. if I'm looking, if I'm in the north and I'm looking, um, I'm looking south and you're looking north, okay, right? On a flat earth, I'm going, this is clockwise and you're seeing it counterclockwise, Right? Because you're on the other side. Yep. All star, the sun, stars, and moon, no matter where you are on Earth, rise in the east, set in the west. So they rise up. For me, this is counterclockwise. But if you're over there, you're seeing it go clockwise. Okay? It's the same direction. Now, the rotation of the sky, you know, the, the North Star is very, uh, is, is stationary. It does a tiny little circle. And all the other stars are fixed and spin around it. Now, if you believe that we're in this heliocentric you know, spinning insanity. Um, how the heck does the North Star stay in one spot when we're traveling four and a half billion miles every year, never to return to where we were before? Okay. And all of these planets stay on a, on a plane chasing the sun at a half a million miles an hour. It's, it's the dumbest thing ever. So with the dome and the lights and them fixed in the sky, the, the optics are complicated. Those videos I show you will show you a lot of things. I'm not even 100% sure that the southern stars that we see are not a reflection of the northern stars. Okay? A reflection in the dome. I'm not sure. But again, the only thing that we can say about the stars in the sky is that they're lights. Same thing with the moon and the sun. They're light. We don't know how big it is, how far it is, what it's made of, what shape it is. We don't know any of that. Right? <laughs> And people, people are like, well, why can't we just triangulate and see where it is? And um, uh, let me let me give you this one. Um, um, the the sun and the moon that we see, in my opinion, are are um, where is it? Are are in an apparent position. What do I mean by that? I got a blue sheet dividing my room in half, ten feet on the other side of this. I have a flashlight that has a square lens on it, but it looks round. Kind of looks just like the sun, doesn't it? And it's yep, ten feet on the other side of this. So Paige is over here to my left. I'm over here, and I go over to her point of view, and she sees the sun right there. If I put a little circle on the sheet, that circle's over there. She's looking at. I'm looking at it over here. She's looking at the same thing over there. Could we triangulate where we see the sun? No, it wouldn't work because it's an apparent position. So I believe the source of the sun is within or above the firmament, within like above the layer that we're under or above it. And we're seeing it just like when you take a magnifying glass 
and focus it on the ground like when you were burning ants as a kid, okay? Yeah. Then you lift it up. You burned them. I know you did. And you lift it up six inches. That point is still there in the air, though. If you put some fog there, you would see it. Or if you put your hand there, you'd be like, ow. And I think that's kind of how the sun works. Through the dome. Again, you know, people love asking about eclipses on the app. The eclipses section is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a great video on there that um, I called our projected sun. So if we go to eclipses right there. And, um, and we scroll down a little bit. Where is it? Um, these two gray ones right here. Watch these two. This explains what we're seeing better than anything else. And I challenge people to um, come up with a better explanation. Again, I'm not claiming this is 100% true, but I'll give you odds if we could find out the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, closer to home than what I, they tell us for you've sure. Seen, you've seen that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, have you seen the solar eclipse um, the, where, there, where, where I'm saying it's not the moon? Uh, I'm not sure. So here is uh here's a here's a clip. What do we see? Do we see the moon? No, we don't. We see missing sun. This is the sky. That's right. Right? This is the sky. There's no difference. Like if I went like I can't I can't hide it. There we go. I can't I can't there we go. If I hid that, you don't see a piece of the moon, you see sky. So there's missing sky, right? And we're told that it's the moon. It's just missing sun. I think it is something blocking the source. If this is a rear, a screen, and that's a being rear projected, there's something coming in between the projector right. and the sun that we see. I could be wrong. But no one has ever, and of course, NASA will give you this. Okay. Yeah. Nobody ever sees that. Right? No. More terrible CGI. It's missing, missing sun. This is sky. Okay, this is just dark. Okay. It's pretty cool. It's really well done. Yeah. And, you know, the, the whole world, and it's funny, to, to a point, Flat Earth is still divisive in the truth community, but thanks to huh. you and people like you, um, it, it more people are waking up to it every single day. And it, I, I know it's not nearly as divisive uh, as it was. <laughs> Not not uh, mentioning the the Jim Fetzer interview from a couple of weeks ago. That was uh, there's some people you're just, you're, you're just never going to be able to get through. You're just not. Um, but because of uh, your work, the the veils are falling uh, upon mankind. And man, what a great day! When uh, again, everything is a deception. And if you think they're lying about everything except we're we're hurtling through space, we're spinning this, that, and the other thing. Um, you know, that that to me is just, uh, I don't buy it. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, you know, so Dave, why the hell are you out here pushing Flat Earth? And, uh, you know, and people criticize me for pushing the app um, because there's no better way to wake people up than my $3 app. And it's not like, you know, I'm asking you for $3 a month or $30 a month. Um, it's $3, okay? And the subscription you can get for free if you can't handle ordering one margarita and not tipping the bartender. Okay. <clears throat> so, so um, why is it important? Because all of the stuff that's been going on in this world, everything, the thing that happened in 2020, um, everything is because you're afraid. You don't know your true power. You don't know where you are. You don't know that there's more. You believe that there's fossil fuel shortages. You believe that we're overpopulated. You believe that the boogeyman's going to get you. You believe that that an asteroid could come from outer space and, and blow you up. You believe that, you know, you have the choice of believing there may not be a creator and evolution and the Big Bang explain everything. But when you understand what flat Earth is, you have no choice other than to accept the fact that there's a creator. And that's what they hate. They don't want you in a situation where you can't deny the creator, right? And if you, if you are, hey, I've got a great relationship with the creator and everything, you do, but you're missing the big picture. You're, you're not seeing the creation. You're not taking advantage of it, and you'll never reach your, your full potential, right? Um, one more thing I want to show you. The, um, where is it? The, the way they hide it is... Um, 
is this, right? Oops, that's not, that's not it. Hold on. So they, they take our world, right? Let me go back. So what is, you know, this is where we are. Here's America, you know, um, South America, Australia. What's out here? We have no idea. We want the right to go explore. There's more land out there, right? But the controllers said, you know what? We, you know, Admiral Byrd found more land out there, right? We're going to cut it out. We're going to wrap it around a sphere. And we're going to say, no one's allowed to go down to this continent down here, right? This is off limits. Every country in the world agrees that you can go here to this little tiny tip to Rothschild Island or Deception Island. Your Deception choice. Island. Yeah. And um, you get to see some penguins and some ice and spend a lot of money. But you can't go explore out here, which is out there, which is out there in the outer space, right? What does this do? This limits your thought. This limits creation. This limits your understanding of where you are. And it puts your mind in a prison. Right? And when your mind is in a prison and can't expand and you live in fear, you'll never reach your true potential. And if everybody reached their true potential, I think we'd have a paradise here. Okay. So that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, that was really well done. And Dave, I can't tell you how many people have emailed me. Uh, it's brought families back together. We talk about what's happened over the last three years and how divisive that was. I've gotten emails from people who have been brought back to God. Uh, one gentleman emailed me. He hadn't talked to his father for 20 years. He came on Flat Earth. that moved him so much. He reunited with his dad. He's back with God. It, it's life-changing. And I get these emails every single week. Me too. Yeah, it's insane. And uh, it's amazing, you know, and, and me before Flat Earth, you know, I'd be listening to a podcast. It's great. Taking three pages of notes. And then they'd mention God, Jesus, whatever. I'd be like, oh, religious cooks, you know, you know. And, uh, and I would just discount everything they said. I threw the baby out with the bathwater. But now I understand that there is a creator. And people say, you know, well, who's God? Where's God? Uh, that's your journey. Understand there's a creator. Deal with it. You make your own relationship with the creator. We're all here. We all have direct connection with the creator. We all have the ability to thrive in this place, right? We missed an opportunity. And this is uh, on the latest episode of Crow. Everyone, please go subscribe to Crow 777 Radio. Two hours in Crow, 777 Radio. Crow 777 Radio. Um, and the last one he did with Fortune St. Germain. This guy, you know, related to Fort the St. Germain, um, dynasty or whatever you want to call it. And uh, this guy, I, you know, this, there's something very special about this guy, but he's talking about, um, I lost my point. He's making a great point. What, what were we just talking about? I just. Yeah, we, you're, you're talking about Crow triple sevens, most yeah, recent episode. Yeah. Yeah. But there was something that fortune said that I wanted everybody to remember. And now it's gone just before that, just go and just go listen to it. You'll understand. Um, of how this world works and how, Oh, he, no, this is what he said. He said, um, the whole world was put to a test with the thing that happened in 2020 and everybody was told to close their businesses and go home and stay home and don't do this and cover up their, 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 their mouth with a muzzle to separate you from your, you know, from breathing. And, um, the world failed. Most of the world failed. I didn't fail. Cause I never complied with any of that. And, uh, if everyone had just, said, screw that, all the governments in the world would have fallen, would have been over, okay? They were, it, it would have been over. Our test is going to come again. They're going to try again. Alien invasion, uh, another variant, uh, something, okay? It's going to come again. Don't fail. I know that your listeners aren't going to fail. I know that the people that already know me, but it's your friends. So everybody, you know, Wake people up to flat earth and all of a sudden they can see everything. I woke people up to 9-11, Sandy, Boston, and uh, they go right back to sleep. They're like, oh, well, you know, the different administration and different people and, you know, good people, bad people. No, you wake them up to flat earth, it's every day. It's the rest of your life. You can't let it down. And everybody's interested. You know, they try to wake somebody up in uh, Saudi Arabia to, to uh, um, the Boston Marathon. They don't care. They don't even know what they never even heard of Boston. Okay. They're like, what are you talking about? Every single person lives on flat earth. They just need to That's know right. it. And their soul is screaming to them, but their conscious mind is lost in the television programming. Okay. And their soul is streaming. And I believe that a lot of depression comes from the disconnection of your soul who 
it's your eternal soul trying to talk to your mind, which is lost in uh, the television programming and Netflix and the news and nonsense. Okay. And when you wake up to flat earth, boom, they start talking again. They're like, yo, check this rock out, man. Okay. <laughs> man, you've been so generous with your time. And uh, every time I get a chance to talk to you, I think this is the third time we've had a chance to talk over the last four years. Um, you, uh, you do this uh, every day every week with, with the same energy. And um, uh, I'm thankful that you become a part of my life. And I know this is uh, this episode, both on video and audio is going to really take off. And I'm going to put all the information for the listeners in the show description. I'll put a link to his apps for iOS, for Android, his websites, his YouTube channel. The referral file when you get the app is FE files. And I'll put that in the show description. And I will also put a link to Crow Triple Seven so you can check him out and subscribe to him as well. Dave, you've been very generous with your time and I want to give you the opportunity with any closing words you have, sir. My, my closing words are, take my advice. If you have kids that are getting towards college, send them to Crow University. Let them wake up that way. Find out what they want to do. And if they want to become a plumber or a builder, send them to send them there. If they want to, you know, open up a retail store, they don't need to go to college for that. They can learn all of this stuff. And we have, we have, everything's online and, you know, you can learn it, but you have to understand how this world works. And I, I'm telling you, Crow 777 Radio, it's $8 a month. It should be $80 a month. Okay. It's still worth it. And, um, and just force yourself to listen to every episode, right? When it comes out, it's the first thing I do. Everything's off the plate. I'm listening. And the beautiful thing is it's just an audio podcast, so you can go anywhere. You don't have to sit. You don't have to watch. It's just audio. And, uh, and I think there's something special about audio-only podcasts sometimes, right? Although, you know, the stuff I'm doing, I need to show you stuff. But um, I love doing audio-only sometimes because uh, you can get more expressive and uh, – and whatnot. So there's my closing thing. FlatEarthDave.com. If you forget everything, just remember FlatEarthDave.com. That's it. There you go. Thank you so much, Dave. It's always good to see you. And again, I'll leave his links to his apps in the show description. And of course, Flat Earth Dave. Uh, for David Weiss, I'm George Hobbs from the Flat Earth Files. Thank you to all the listeners and your continued support. And until next time, my friends, we will see you.